Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Welcome to AutoLine Daily. Later in the show, I'll tell you what kind of car that barn find is all about. But first, the news. China is suffering through the worst air pollution the modern world has ever seen. Pollution readings in major cities are significantly above what health officials call hazardous. China's coal plants and oil refineries are getting a lot of the blame, but now Chinese officials are pointing to gasoline, which contains 15 times more sulfur than in Europe. And they're saying this is the main cause. One report says smog in China now covers 1.4 million square kilometers, and it's also now starting to blow all over the world. Speaking of China, GM just recorded its best sales month there, and now it wants to buy other Chinese automaker to boost its sales by 75% to 5 million units by 2015, and of course it wants to do that along with its local partner, SAIC. The Chinese government wants to see the industry consolidate because there are too many car companies. In fact, 10 of the 71 automakers in China last year did not even sell one vehicle. When the new S-Class Mercedes comes out later this year, it's going to be the first car ever with a limited form of autonomous steering. Mercedes calls it Distronic Plus with driver assist. When a driver engages the adaptive cruise control, the car will automatically do the steering, but it'll only work as long as the driver keeps his or her hands on the steering wheel. There's a sensor that shuts it off if your hands are not on the wheel. And I've got to believe the lawyers forced the engineers to add that because there's no technical reason why it's needed. But this shows that autonomous driving will be here faster than most people expect. And now Mercedes will be able to claim it was the first in the world to offer this technology, albeit in limited form. Mini just introduced the seventh model in its lineup, the all-new Paceman. It's based on the same platform as the Countryman, but it's slightly longer and a little bit lower. And it's a two-door model, unlike the four-door Countryman. The four-seater is powered by the same engines as the hardtop. You get a choice of a naturally aspirated 1.6 liter with 121 horsepower, a turbocharged version that cranks out 181 horses, and the powerful John Cooper Works has 208. Pricing starts just under $24,000, with the John Cooper Works model starting at just over $36,000. The Paceman goes on sale next month, while the JCW follows in April. Yesterday, we showed you our latest barn find that I found in the woods while out skiing. And yeah, I know it was not really in a barn. In fact, someone out there thinks I must be skiing in a junkyard. But here's my best guess as to what this car is. A 1959 Ford Fairlane. And that's because the taillights and the front end are what give it away. Now, some of you may disagree with that because our comment section was chock full of other suggestions yesterday. And speaking of the comment section, coming up next, it's time for it. You Said It. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. And now it's time for some of your feedback. SeaTech wonders why I think Chrysler has to boost its sales in markets outside of NAFTA. He says, given the losses that almost all the other major car companies are taking in Europe and South America, why is it so important for Chrysler to join them? Because Chrysler can export vehicles to those markets, giving it more capacity utilization in its plants in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, and that could greatly boost its profits. Also, it's unlikely Chrysler is going to increase its market share significantly in the NAFTA region, so the only way it can grow sales is getting into other markets. Pedro Fernandez wants to know, is Ford also planning to use the one-liter three-cylinder EcoBoost powerhouse in the Fusion as well? 
Well, Pedro, they're doing it in Europe and other world markets, but not in the U.S. market. Chuck Grenchy saw our glowing report on the new Subaru Forester and says, So John, other than maybe the best Subaru ever made, how does it stack up to the competition and what is its competition? Well, Chuck, the competition is the Ford Escape, the Toyota RAV4, Honda CRV, and other compact utilities. I'd say the Forester stacks up really well against them, and I especially like its new all-wheel drive system. Philip says, I don't understand your knocking turbos. My understanding is that while superchargers do decrease economy because they inject extra fuel into the engine, turbos should not decrease mileage at all because they only use exhaust gases to produce more power. So what's the story? The story is that both turbos and superchargers simply push more air into an engine, not more fuel. More fuel can be added with that air, but that fuel does not come from the turbo or the supercharger. And even though they use more fuel, they also add power, and that allows automakers to use smaller displacement engines. And theoretically, that will improve fuel economy. But if you accelerate briskly using the power of the turbo or the supercharger, you will see that fuel economy drop off dramatically. Warren Webb asks a great question. If the EPA revised its testing procedures, wouldn't that make meeting the 54 plus MPG standard even more unreachable? No, it would not, Warren, because there are actually two numbers that the EPA uses, what they call the adjusted number and the unadjusted number. Unadjusted means the EPA simply reads the data right off their test, and that is the number they use to calculate an automaker's fuel economy. But for the real world, where people use their air conditioning or seat heaters or open the windows or drive over the speed limit, the EPA uses an adjusted number so that the fuel economy label comes close to matching the MPGs that people will really get in their everyday driving. In fact, the EPA has a long history of changing the adjusted number as consumer habits change. So for small displacement turbo engines and for hybrids with lithium ion batteries, I think it's time for the EPA to change its adjustments, but that's not going to make it harder for automakers to meet the 54.5 MPG standard. Thanks for all your comments and questions. You really keep us on our toes. Hey, all you diesel fans out there, we've got a great Autoline After Hours for you tomorrow night. We've got Josh Tabble with Chevrolet Small Cars, who's coming in to give us all the details on the diesel engine going into the Chevy Cruze. I can't wait to learn more about it. So join me and the auto extremist, Peter DeLorenzo, as we bring you some of the best inside information in the business. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.